choose certain colours when you're painting? I choose... Um, I, I tend to go on instinct, actually. I'm a very instinctive painter. Uh, colours can obviously be representational. Green can be representation of spending a day in the park. Red can be love uh, or, um, or lust or... Um, and yellow can be a triumphant colour, blue can be a sacred colour. I often paint in blue, blue's certainly one of my favourite colours, it's a very sacred colour. A lot of, I was very influenced, I still am, by the National Gallery and the, and the paintings of the, of the old masters. Uh, maybe out of fashion, but uh, it's never been to me. And, um, I, and I've always, I was going to the National as a child, I always, and as an adult, we, it's all about the sacred. It's all about the holy. It's all about saints and, and uh, the divine experience. And um, and I wanted to communicate that. Um, you know, I wanted to paint in oils, and uh, I wanted to to communicate the sublime, mm. the sacred. So uh, I felt through abstract painting, I was able to do that. It's another language. It's it's another. Um, it's another, it's another country, abstract painting. And the rules still apply, you know, you still have to paint with intelligence. You still have to be aware of um, perspective and the relationship of colours and mm. cool and warm yeah. colours. Yeah. You know, cool and warm and uh, hot and cold and, yeah. um, and the balance of colours and the colour wheel. Mm. Um, but uh, abstract painting, to me, it's another language. And that's what art's about. I, 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 I was, uh, I suddenly, uh, I was a portrait painter and a figurative painter, and I suddenly felt I wasn't. I wanted to be an artist. I always call myself as an artist, and uh, and I found abstract painting. It took me many years of splashing around and making frightful mess mm. before I suddenly started to find a language. And it said everything to me. No, no one ever understood it. Mm. What's this language called? Uh, well, it's the abstract. Yeah. It's the abstract. Um, yeah. So for that, you feel that you transcend yourself more through abstract. Yeah, abstract. absolutely. Sure. Transcend myself and, and, and the world. And I didn't want to... I was doing a lot of nude paintings at the moment, mm -hmm. at, at the time. And um, I, I used to have friends who used to look at the paintings and say, Oh, look at that. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I fancy a bit of that. Mm -hmm. And I was so disappointed. I felt, no, you've missed the point. I'm not trying to communicate last. I'm trying to communicate the sacred, um, the sacred female. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it, it used to upset me. And so uh, I came around to abstract and realized that no one could then say, that's about a dude, that's a painting of a dude, that's a painting of a, a beautiful woman with, with beautiful, uh, a, a beautiful body. Yeah. Like the one behind you there, yeah. this one, it's got that kind of doorways. Yeah, right? yeah. Oh, for me it is, but for you it might be something else. No, absolutely. Well, for, uh, uh, what it is for you is more important. Yeah. You know, what it is for me, sometimes I don't even know what it is for me. Yeah. It's a bad day. But um, if it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's another language. It's mm. another form. And it's a meditation as well. Mm. That's the thing. Words don't get in the way, and uh, that was what it was so exciting to me when I started to find a language. Mm. And what advice would you give your younger self? My younger self, um, what advice? Um, work harder, <laughs> work harder, uh, work harder. Be kinder, um, yeah, and be more thoughtful. allowing us into your studio with this film. We were, it was such a 
privilege and uh, and a real treat for us to to see your working space and see your paintings. Tell us how how are you in that space um, every day? Are you always painting in that space, or what is that? I all yeah. Um, my I do. I always paint in that space. Um, I spend hours in that space. Yeah. Uh, it's it's got it's got good light. Uh, the the wind rushes through the studio yeah. and keep, you know sweeps the fumes out. Yeah. 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 And when you when you started painting, was that uh, a conscious decision or was it something that just evolved? Uh, it evolved. I always used to tell my father, much to his horror, that I was going to be an artist, yeah. and uh, and but and it and it slowly just came about and came about. And philosophically, it was the right conclusion for me. Yeah. What did your father? I'm going to ask you to go a bit further because because um, because you're in the screen, and so I'm wondering whether we can go a bit further forward so that you don't go in the screen. There you go. Is that Capturing better? you, yeah, that's good, okay. perfect. Okay. Maybe the screen can go higher because it's catching. Um, so so what, did you, what did your father want you to be, and, and did he have any aspirations for you that were different to what you? Um, no, he wasn't, he, he didn't really, he wanted me to be successful, rich, yeah. Um, down to earth, yeah. focused, normal, yeah. Yeah. kind of average Joe. Yeah. Um, and I try to be that still. Yeah. <laughs> but um, he, he certainly, he, he was a writer and he, uh, he struggled in life with, yes. with money and, and so forth. And um, so I don't think he really wanted me to become a writer, an artist, but he wasn't surprised. Mm. I come from a family of artists and, yeah. And did you start as a, at a young age experimenting with paint or other mediums? What was your... I started at a young age in theatre. Theatre? Uh, yeah. At 17, I was running a theatre company throughout HM Prisons um, from 17 to 25. And then I, as I grew up and uh, changed, um, I wanted to be a painter. Yeah. How did that... It takes a lot, bit of confidence to say I'm going to be a painter now. Yeah. Did, was that a conscious decision, or did you just start making paintings and putting them out there? Um, I was, I knew a painter at the time, and uh, and I used to see him work. A, a guy called Lance Tilbury, and he, uh, I was very impressed by him, and, and I'd watch him work. And he didn't encourage me, but he, he sort of showed me the way a bit, and and. Uh, and, and, you know, was positive about it. Mm. Um, so, yeah, and, and it was just something I was, I, I just really, it became such a part of me. Mm. I, I couldn't, I, I, I'd have painted in, uh, you know, anywhere, anywhere I was, I was painting. Really? Yeah. And, and, and it, when you talked about theatre earlier, that's also the arts. So there's yes. kind of something about self-expression, whether it's through acting and theatre, or through painting, is yeah. there, is there yeah. a recurrent theme in what you're trying and the things that you? Certainly, yeah. I I learned a lot from uh, the theatre of drama. Really? Yes, yeah. and I I quickly learned what makes a good play, what makes a good film, what makes a good painting. Yeah. In my mind, is drama. Every good painting you look at has something in it: pathos, drama. Yeah. A hint of. A hint of violence, a hint of sex, a hint of something, an edge. Yeah. And um, and I discovered myself being a painter and a travelling artist, a travelling um, dramatist and a painter. Um, I discovered myself often on the edge. And so it became, the work's always autobiographical, so it became part of my, my uh, mode operandi. Yeah. Modus operandi to paint to try and find that edge yes. in the painting. Do you see that? Yeah, I can see that, and, and so, especially in your in your in your latest work, which is someone saw the other day. So this is quite all the figurative work, yes, which is the beautiful. Yeah. And this one and, and the ones that follow are all. Someone said the other day when they were looking at it in the exhibition, was said that that was it's like a controlled explosion. Yeah. When you talk about being on the edge. Yes. So how, that that's a contradictory in terms of a control, but an explosion. How do you feel when you're creating these? They look explosive, but there is very, are they meticulously planned or are they just you going, yeah, tell no, us about they, that. They are, they are meticulously planned. Yeah. Um, I work 
very pedantically with drawings to begin with and sp I'll spend a week, I've just spent, I mean it's, it's during an exhibition so my mind hasn't been 100% on it but I've, uh, I've just spent a week doing a drawing yeah. and um, yeah I'll do a drawing and, I, and I'll, I'll use a couple of, uh, I'll use one main theme and then I'll use a couple of paints and then the, the hues, the colours will change um, as I work and uh, and I'll search as I say I'll, I'll look for that edge this painting is boring yes. I find this painting boring this do you ever find your own work boring often really often uh, and I will destroy it and and I won't destroy it. usually what I'll do is I'll find out why it's boring and what I need to do yeah. to make it exciting yeah. how do you do that do you, do you just look at it for hours and say how can I shift it or does it just come to you in one fell <laughs> no 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 I, I don't I I try one thing yeah. and then I would, normally it's due to the science of painting. Normally it's because I haven't used a cold with a cold color, a cold with a cold hue. So for instance, um, in this painting, I'll, I'll, have high, I'll highlight the blues by yeah. using the orange, which is the contrary. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So the orange will make the blue stand out, but I'll use a cold blue, such as the dark blue yeah. against a light blue. To give it a movement and and I'm telling you my secrets now. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. Please tell me more. Yeah. Well, um, of course, I'll need to um, ground the painting. So I use heavy black lines to give it, yes. especially if they're an abstract painting, it's easy, with, as you know yourself, being a painter, your abstract paintings can just take off, yes. you know, and then they're, they're, they're not... The viewer will look at them and, and they won't feel grounded. Yes. And you've got to make, you know, it's like Steppenwolf, Herman Hesse. Yeah. He says to Pablo, Pablo, how can you uh, make these, um, how can you sing these boring tunes? And he says, I'm an artist, not just for myself, for the people. Yeah. And that's, that, that's yes. how I see it as well, is, is when somebody looks at the painting, they have got to be what they see you have got to, as you say, control. Yes. You know, you have got to, for want of a better word, manipulate the viewer's yes. mind, eyes. It's really interesting what you say about the, that you do as an artist care about the viewer. Very much. Because there's, yeah. you know, some artists will yeah. make their work and just say, well, I'm making this and that's what I want. I'm putting it out there and people can feel whatever about yes. it whereas you're actually quite conscious yeah of the viewer yeah and that's kind of a that's kind of a weight to have at the back of your mind that you want it to be understood in a way or relatable in a way yes um how does that inhabit you when you're making it are you self observing and self criticizing while you're doing it or is it something that you do once you've done part of it and then evaluate no i do i've i i develop that um that attitude towards painting at art school and I've kept it ever since. Right. And it, I, 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 obviously I paint for myself. I use my own knowledge yeah. um, because I've, I've, you know, I've studied art. I've studied, studied fine art, fine drawing, colour, draftsmanship, the history of art. For years and years, since I was 14 years old, I started to um, attend life drawing classes in the Kensington Chelsea uh, College. And yeah, I, I absolutely, the minute I start a painting, it is not for me. Interesting, really? Yeah, yeah, it's not for me, it's for somebody else. And it's for somebody else to buy, to give me money for. Yeah, there so, is that relationship. Yeah, you, yeah. very much so. Because yeah. it is a living as well, as of course, you know, you have to make a living out yeah, of it. So that yeah. balance between everything that you, that's a, that's a fine balance to strike for every artist. It right? is, and and. I don't, I, I mean, sometimes I'll go years without making a living from it. Yeah. You know, I, well, the most I've ever gone is two years without yeah. selling a painting. But then other years, you'll, I'll sell a few, few more paintings. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, the tax bracket in this country is quite, <laughs> it's yeah. not, you know, yeah. not too low. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, yeah, so very much so. It's an exchange of energies, and I'm aware of that. Oh. You know, if I didn't sell up, I would have often, I'd be on the streets, Yeah. yeah. I do other things, you know, other jobs. What other things yeah. you do? What other jobs? Um, I've, I've taught, um, I've tutored, I've dug ditches, I've laid cables, I've laid piping. Great. Um, weighted tables, yeah. um, been a barman. Yeah. 
um, being a doorman, so on. And do you think that informs your creative work with all these different experiences? When you do different jobs, you're put in a different situation where it brings out different parts of you or a different context that makes you, enriches you as a, yeah. as a, as a person that relates to other people. Yes, not? very much so. You see, you see the, the gamut of humanity. Yes. And of course, when you're doing the, the, what might, some might consider the, the skivvy jobs, the, the, the uh, laboring jobs, you see a different side of humanity. Yeah. You know, you see an extraordinary um, honourable side of humanity. Not honourable, really? Honourable, yeah, not least in yourself. Yeah. You know, you've got to do seven hours digging a ditch. Yeah. You find honour in yourself. Yes. But also you, you find it in, um, in other people as well. Mm -hmm. Because you see people treat you in certain ways. Yes. Which you won't have if you walk... You know, it's, it's the same with I've worked in, in the city. Yes. You know, as a... Uh, as a um, salesman in the city, and you're taught to say in, in, in that way, in a very yes. different way, and you mix with a different, completely different Crowd. group of people. Yeah. So it's it, it's great. I mean, it's hard, but it's great. Yeah, of yeah. course, and and yeah, it helps the art. Yeah. And talking about the art, we've had some conversations today about what is art and what the art, art world, you yeah. know, and how the art world works. Do you find yeah. it um, challenging to be in the art world, or you know? piercing through or do you find it a kind of organic thing with the community that you're in i stood i stood outside after our portobello radio interview last week and yes. we stood outside for 10 minutes yes and everyone was walking about the street so hi pierce hi pierce there was this kind of feeling of community yes outside and that yeah. you're quite well known in the in, yeah in, so how does that work for you in terms of um, yeah i'm i'm really a community guy definitely i mean i i love people yeah. I, I i so love people i love the warmth of um, conversation, yeah. but um, I've I've really been very careful to I exhibit a lot in the area with pop up uh, with Ron Best, for instance, pop up um, exhibitions, yeah. and and I really try and get the community involved and get the community interested in art, mm. and um, yeah, and I, I and I love to 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 do that to 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 take that gift to people, and I've taught art in the communities as well. Have you? I've taught art in. Um, Drop-in centres, uh, local drop-in centres, um, prisons, yeah. When, when you do that in community centres, do you find that people, when they take a paintbrush, they don't see themselves as an artist, but you're helping them discover that side of them? Is that rewarding for you? How do, how, and how do you notice in their reactions to, oh, wow, I can, I can make something? How does that well, happen? Well, what um, I discovered from that is that somebody can do a little piece of art yeah. and cabinet and their niece will walk in and the family will be all around it and it always means so much to them yes. i mean I, I always say to to people um chopin yeah called nocturnes yeah correct? yeah, yeah was, and do you listen to to that while you're painting or not really is that yeah you know? i do sometimes of yeah. course yeah absolutely sometimes i need absolute quiet mm -hmm. when i'm wrestling with with technique or the paintings are the absolute tech quiet, but when I'm blocking in colour and it's just a lovely time, mm. as as you know, as a mm. painter, yes, as as any artist knows, that lovely moment when, when it's just flowing and yeah, with yeah. Your, yeah, yeah, when the paint is flowing, yeah. then I'll listen to Chopin. Yeah. Or if I need speed, I'll put on some rock and roll or some yeah. disco. You know, you dance around your studio by yourself. Always, sometimes. yeah, it's always it's good. Yeah, <laughs> actually, uh, yeah, it's quite. Um, it's quite, when I'm in the studio, actually, it's a knife fight. Yes. Yeah, it's not a dance. A night flight. Knife fight. Oh, a knife fight. Yes, oh, okay. yeah. yeah. But with a brush. So it can wrestle, you're wrestling with it. Absolutely. Is it, is, it, is it quite physical? It's very physical and it's very, it's a, a terrible struggle and a terrifying struggle. And every time I do a painting, I feel I'm about to give up painting. Really? Every time. If it's, and I'll work for 16 hours on the piece and I won't have slept and I won't have eaten properly and God, it'll, and I'll be ragged and it'll be awful. Yeah. And I'll be, I'll be like, I have to give up painting. What am I going to do? Yeah, really? <laughs> and then you always have that self-doubt. But then when you pull through, how do you feel after you've pulled through? And actually, when do you know yeah. that, it, that, that, it's, that it's finished, you know, that this painting is ready to be? What is that moment? I know a painting is finished when it starts to become a different painting. Yeah. And also, I know a painting is finished when I start to fuss. 
Oh, I see. When I started, you know, sort of, uh, sort of. Um... Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Let's finish. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. You know, go get yourself a cup of coffee and yeah. start yeah. another one. And, and do you have a color scheme that means something to you? Do you have certain colors that are key? Um, I have quite, quite as you can see in this palette, um, uh, as I'm painting nocturnes, often there are the blues and the purples in the background. And I, and I tend to use luminous colors, luminous colors that work well with the dark. So that's most colors, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so you're kind of very open to whatever feels right do yeah. you just experiment putting them next to each other or do they have a symbolism to you do they have meanings they do have meanings no. yeah like the painting in the uh in the exhibition yes um the the large piece that i've been exhibiting yes um it's got red and red is is obviously it's a very warm color and it was a time of the death of my father and um, my father and i didn't always have a uh, great relationship but we healed it towards the end of his life and I painted this towards the end of his life and I would come home every night and paint the uh, and, 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 and just paint try and paint happiness and comfort and love and that's what red is yeah. red is, is blood it's flowing through our veins it's the stuff of our life it's the stuff of the fire yes. that warms us that feeds us yes. um Red is the color of of, uh, of the womb, mother. Yes. You know, so you know you're you're safe with red, but you're only safe with red as a painter if you balance it. Yes. Because if you make it too red, someone's going to come along and see a red painting, and they're going to maybe you know the the way colors work is if you have an all red canvas, your eyes automatically flick away because you're searching for the contrary, and the contrary of red is green, but I use a blue. To calm the eye down, mm. yeah. Yeah. So, see that here. yeah. So you can see that here. I, I, it's very much, it's very much a scientific painting. I mean, it's a drawing actually, but I've got the the red, um, the red, and, and the contour of the red is the green, and um, and the ultimate cool is the blue at the background. Yeah. And then of course black works. The black charcoal works very well with blue. It's, it's a charcoal drawing charcoal yes um oil pastel and a collage these are collages as well they look like fragments of time there's a kind of time element in them somehow yeah yeah well i try and put movement in yes yeah so as soon as you have movement yeah. you have time passing yes which is if you can achieve as a painter yeah. um is well, there again one of those tricks which some will notice and some will won't but yes. it will attract the eye Mm. Yeah, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, the plan. They're definitely attractive. People have been stopping in their tracks looking at the, these paintings. Oh, really? And they are quite, like this one as well, they're quite yes. hip hypnotic in a sense. It's an internal as well as an external work. And you can yeah. really feel that movement within this moment, like capturing a moment in time. Um, yes. You, talking about time, what is your next? Are, are you developing this um, more? Yeah. Or what are you? Yeah. yeah. No. So going deeper into it. Into yes. your next phase. Yeah. yeah. Yes, um, I'm going deeper into it, continuing with the abstract. Yes. Unless I do, I'm a portrait painter as well. Yes. So if portraits come along, I'm happy. Commissioned one. Yeah, yeah. commissioned portraits. Um, I'm more than happy to take those on. Yeah. And they're very rewarding. I love people. Um, yeah, because I think you have a kind of real affection to people. They're yeah. kind of natural. Yeah. Yeah. Bringing someone's spirit. The thing about portraits is that you have to you're bringing out not just the likeness, but the spirit of the person. So you almost have to care. Yes. Yeah, and if yeah. somebody agrees to sit with you for a painting, usually, always, what am I saying usually? Always, they're beautiful people that yes. are poetic people. Yeah. Most people are beautiful, poetic people, mm. you know? Well, you are a beautiful, poetic person. <laughs> and thank you for being with us here today. That was a really great insight into your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. Thank you very much for having me.